If you've ever wondered what kindergarten antics would look like in an adult world, look no further than politics and Formula 1. But since we are an F1 channel, let's focus on that last one. The situation between Hamilton and Toto Wolff is one of the more bizarre things I've seen in Formula 1 in recent years. If you were to boil it down to simplicity, Lewis is leaving the team for performance reasons and Wolff simply can't take it. That's literally it. But instead of saying it like it is, we need to farm the media for content and sympathy points from fans, journalists and who knows what else. Header after header after header in the media. Lewis feels disrespected at Mercedes. Lewis still has what it takes to win. Wolf unhappy with Hamilton's departure. Wolf says everything has a shelf life. Why can't people just say it like it is? Even the media, they are the worst at this. They drag everything out for ages without saying anything. Let's quickly get you up to speed and close out this annoying chapter of Formula 1 forever. I'm not going to go into full detail, just enough to get you up to speed. From 2014 to 2020, Hamilton and Mercedes dominate Formula 1. 8 constructors titles and 6 drivers titles for Lewis, 1 for Rosberg. Hamilton is on top of the world. 2021 they get challenged by Red Bull and lose the driver's title while winning the constructors. This year technically should never have happened because we were set to go to these current F1 cars in 2021. Covid extended the old generation by one year due to global lockdown and the FIA hurt Mercedes on purpose to create a bit more challenge for them, mainly with low rake floors being hurt and high rake floors being unaffected by the floor changes. 2022 comes around finally and Mercedes fall off hard with the new generation. They go from being dominant race winners to barely being able to contest for top 3 in most races. The car has flaws, mainly bouncing due to porpoising and a bad floor design with a very different side pod to the rest of the grid. Hamilton gets to watch his main rival win race after race while he is stuck in a shitbox. His happiness levels in Mercedes are going down race by race. At the same time, his much younger teammate is wrestling the car and getting more out of it which pisses Hamilton off. Any competitive person hates being beaten, especially by someone driving the same machinery. The pressure forces Lewis to go down a more different route in car setups. Why? Because it's a way to save face with the media and his sponsors. I'm performing badly because I'm trying different setups with the car to help the team understand it better. George is beating me because he's driving a stable setup. Don't ask me why I'm not driving the stable setup and beating George because there's truly no answer to that. You can argue back and forth as fans how much Lewis actually helped Mercedes in 2022 with setups, but the reality is he was soundly beaten by Russell. Russell himself had been driving a shitbox at Williams for three years before that and he was more used to driving a bad car. That's literally it, there is no real drama here despite what the media made it out to be. Now, while the two drivers are struggling the entire year, Wolf and Mercedes are adamant that there's nothing wrong with the concept of the car. The engineers just have to fix the bouncing and Mercedes should be back to winning ways. Spoiler alert, they were wrong. While Mercedes did take one race win in 2022 in Brazil, it was mainly due to Red Bull getting their setups completely wrong during the sprint weekend with only one practice session. During the entire year, Mercedes were often very fast in practice, but as soon as qualifying and the race came, they dropped off a cliff. So it wasn't really that surprising that they locked in the best setup with only one practice session. The race was won by Russell, with Hamilton coming in second place, which further pissed Lewis off. That race gave Mercedes false confidence that the car was actually good, and dumb as they were, they stuck with that same car concept for 2023. 2023 comes along and Mercedes are still where they were in the year before not being able to challenge for race wins. But what's even worse is that Aston Martin, a much smaller team with relatively low experience to the other top teams, has an insane upgrade package which takes them from 7th best on the grid to 2nd best, just behind Red Bull. They leapfrogged 5 teams in one offseason. Alfa Romeo, McLaren, Alpine, Mercedes and Ferrari. And what's even worse for Hamilton, 
Fernando Alonso, an old rival of Hamilton, is driving the hell out of that Aston Martin, getting six podiums in the first eight races, while his teammate is getting railed in the back by much slower cars, not even scoring points. Why is he not scoring points? By this point you should know. This leap by Aston Martin made Mercedes look stupid by comparison, especially since Aston uses Mercedes engines. They are a customer team, while Mercedes is a constructor. How can this little team make this large of a step forward, but Mercedes F1 that is worth over a billion dollars are unable to fix some core issues? Now put yourself in Hamilton's shoes. What's worse than seeing your last F1 rival fuck off into the distance and win every race by a landslide? Seeing another one of your F1 rivals beat you in an inferior team but with a better car. At this point, you do have to question what the hell is Mercedes doing with all of their money and their big facilities. Since Verstappen won 19 out of 22 races in 2023, with Paris winning 2 and Sainz winning 1, driving to win races for Mercedes were out of the question. Now we're only racing for points and Lewis beats Russell, who had a bit of a chaotic year. The car concept remained the same throughout 2023 despite multiple teams abandoning their own car concept in order to copy Red Bull and find more performance. This took McLaren, Ferrari, Aston Martin closer to Red Bull's pace while Mercedes remained where they were. Now it's worth to note that Mercedes had a fast car, but it was just extremely unpredictable and unstable at times and the drivers were always caught off guard. However, 2023 ends with Mercedes clinching P2 in the constructors from Ferrari by 3 points. 409 points were scored that year, Red Bull scored 860 and Verstappen could have won both titles by himself with his 575 points. That's how far ahead they were of the rest of the grid. Now, during most of 2023, Hamilton was teasing his team and the media with his contract negotiations and finally signed a new contract in August 2023 that would keep him at Mercedes until the end of 2025. Seemingly, everyone was happy with this. Mercedes did improve a lot during 2023 and outdeveloped Aston Martin and McLaren. During this point in time, Mercedes were in a good position to mount the comeback towards the top in the offseason. Now preseason for 2024 comes along and reports are coming in that Red Bull are even faster than before. Adrian Newey has cooked up a new car concept and off to the races we go. All that work that Mercedes have put in and Lewis is just as far away from winning again than he was in 2022. He decides to sign for Ferrari, activating an early release clause in his contract and 2024 will be the last year for him in Mercedes. This is where the drama begins this year, because he never told his team about his intentions. The move got leaked online and Wolf heard about it through the news. When they finally met up at the start of the season, Hamilton admitted he was in fact leaving and Wolf felt betrayed. Now for everyone that is new to Formula 1, it is standard procedure in Formula 1 that you don't give a driver that is leaving your team for another one any insight on what the future brings for the car or the team. It's a very secretive sport and you need to protect your intellectual property. If Mercedes come up with an insane car concept that is extremely fast and Lewis knows about it and how it works, he will tell Ferrari when he gets there and the concept loses a lot of its value. So throughout the entire year, the outgoing driver will start to feel left out. Less meetings than before, new upgrades will go first on the teammate's car instead because that's the driver that is staying and they need to get up to speed with the new parts. Their time is more valuable to the team. If the car upgrades were good and they have put it first on the outgoing driver's car, that driver can lie and say that the parts are not performing well even though they are to give himself and the new team an advantage next year. Everyone knows this, even Lewis. But Lewis, being the lover of attention most of his career, simply can't handle this. Every race is met with a new headline in the media. The team don't trust me. The team favors George over me. I'm not getting the best strategy by the team. The team keeps giving me a bad setup. Every single weekend you have new headlines. 
Now, while all of this is going on for months in 2024, McLaren made a giant leap forward in development and has overtaken Red Bull as the best car. Ferrari has overtaken Red Bull at points with the second best car. Verstappen is now struggling to win races and get podiums and Perez is doing his best to win the Destructors Championship with the most damage done in a single year. Where is Mercedes? Still where they were. Russell gets a race win in Austria after Verstappen and Norris had contact. Lewis gets a win in Silverstone after nearly a thousand days without one after McLaren choked hard with strategy and their tires. Had the race gone on for one more lap, he would have most likely lost that win to Verstappen on much better tires, but a win is still a win. Two races later, Mercedes finished in a 1-2 with Russell winning Spa with Hamilton half a second behind him, but Russell gets disqualified for being underweight, so Hamilton inherits the race win. Mercedes are finally back. Three race wins in the last four races. Spoiler alert again, they were not back. Since the Spa weekend, Mercedes have been on the podium once with Russell in Azerbaijan. They were back to being the fourth best car and the drama continues. Now we're at the Vegas Grand Prix. Three races left to go for Hamilton and Mercedes. What are the headlines in the news? Are people thanking each other or looking back at over a decade worth of good experience? No. The headlines go like this. Hamilton wanted to leave Mercedes early for Ferrari after a horrible result in Brazil where the team gave him a bad setup. Wolf was recently on a podcast talking about his relationship with Hamilton and the media's creating more drama. Wolf is in the headlines again talking about his new book that goes into depth about his time at Mercedes, his own personal life and his relationship with Hamilton. What can the media do with this information? They take things out of context and create even more drama between them two. Why can nobody say it exactly like it is? Here's the truth. Hamilton likes to win races and loves being the center of attention so that he can spew out his political comments and feel good about himself. Mercedes are extremely incompetent for the size of their team and have been unable to create a good car concept while at least four other teams have been able to do so, even though those four teams are smaller in size than Mercedes are. Mercedes have been extremely stubborn and stuck in their way with their development program and they are still living off the highs of the good years between 2014 and 2020. Lewis, who still wants to win, moves to another team capable of winning races and Mercedes are left without a world championship driver for the first time in modern history, which will hurt them financially with sponsors leaving the team to go follow Hamilton. Mercedes feel forced to take a giant leap of faith in the current driver market in a promising rookie Kimi Antonelli who has impressed the world in the junior categories but has not been that insane relative to the rest of the grid in Formula 2 this year. If he performs next year, Mercedes get to say that they made the correct decision and that they're happy that Hamilton left. And if he doesn't perform, he will be the scapegoat and Mercedes will ruin his career. All of this while George Russell has to see someone less accomplished than him get promoted from Formula 2 to a top team in Formula 1 without driving for a lesser team first like he had to do. Russell won the F2 title in his time and Kimi Antonelli is only 6th place, but Russell had to race for Williams for 3 years before being promoted to Mercedes despite being a much better driver than Bottas, while Antonelli gets a direct promotion. While this seems like nothing to you and me, F1 drivers are extremely petty, and I guarantee you that Russell's personal main goal next year is going to crush Antonelli in order to prove a point. Lewis is already set to leave Mercedes, but he's mad that he's not allowed to leave early to test with Ferrari. In the same way that Carlos Sainz leaving Ferrari has been allowed an end of season test with Williams after the final race in Abu Dhabi. Lewis is a much bigger personality than Sainz is and has a lot of contractual obligations with the team and the sponsors that need to be carried out, which prevents him from being seen in Ferrari gear. It's really that simple. But has the media ever told all of this in this simple of a manner? Nope, because they benefit from dragging all this out and creating drama out of thin air. Now you understand what's going on between Hamilton and Mercedes and why you keep seeing them in the headlines. And with three races left to go, we still have a lot of time for the media to create an endless amount of headlines and continue with this shit show up until the red lights go out in Australia in 2025 in the first race of that season. 
I wonder what the news would be like if next year Ferrari suddenly dropped off a cliff and became the 6th best car like they were in 2020. I'm sure the media would have a lot of fun with that one. But that's going to be it for this video. Thank you all for watching. If you want to see more Formula 1 content like this that goes straight to the point without messing around, then give the channel a follow because we're only getting started. Thank you all for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.